Hello, staff and students of Southern Adventist University. I just want to share my heart with you and a few words of encouragement for you today. I don't know about you, but I woke up in a little bit of a funky mood. Why? <laughs> Same reason maybe you all have been in a little bit of a funky mood. Our world has changed overnight. The whole world has been brought to its knees by this coronavirus. We're all in this situation where we're uh, closed in, under quarantine. We can't talk with each other. Classes have been suspended this week because of the tornado, add insult to injury. How can we cope with all of this mess? How can we stay afloat? How can we go deeper with God, this being an opportunity to go deeper with God, rather than this driving us from God? I have some little pointers I want to share with you. This is what has helped me. I hope it'll be some help with you. First of all, I'd like to challenge you to pray what I call gutsy prayers. We're accustomed to praying churchy kind of prayers where you have the right phraseology, everything is just so. Look, talk from the bottom of your heart to God. He wants you to pour out your heart to him. That's what Psalm 62 verse 8 says, pour out your heart to God. I love what it says in Exodus chapter 33. Exodus 33, let me look there quickly. It talks about how Moses had a close talk, conversation, communication with God. Exodus chapter 33, verse 9. It says, It came to pass when Moses entered the tabernacle that the pillar of cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. Verse 11, so the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks with his friend. What's the difference between elevator conversation, conversation with a casual acquaintance, and a conversation with your best friend? I think you know it's the depth, the depth at which that conversation goes. On the elevator, hey, how you doing? Nice day. Nice weather. Casual acquaintance, maybe sharing some facts. But with your best friend, you go the deeper levels. You share your thoughts, opinions, ideas. You share your heart. You share your feelings. And you share your gut, your deeper, most, innermost needs. And I really believe at a time like this, of the coronavirus, of the tornado that's ripped through, destroying so many homes in our area, we've been without power, we haven't been able to access the internet, most of us. It's a time to be honest with God. Be transparent, be vulnerable. Tell them how you feel. Tell them what's on your heart. Pray gutsy prayers. The second thing I might recommend, it's somewhat akin to that, start a prayer journal. This is my prayer journal, my prayer journal. It's a three ring notebook and I actually have five tabs. I have a tab where I pray for personal and family needs. I have a tab where I pray for my church and my school and the issues that we're facing and encountering. I have a tab called Outreach, where I pray for the people around me, like Jerry next door, who lost his wife, Cheryl, two months ago. He's devastated. She went in for pneumonia to ER. She never came home. That fourth tab is for special needs, special needs, like finances, like health issues, like this coronavirus, whatever. Then the final is my daily tab, where I scan through the other tabs. Each day I scan through one of those tabs and I actually write out my prayers in this section, beginning with praises, and then I go through and write
write out different prayers that I have. It helps to keep me focused. It helps me to look outside of myself where I'm not just worried about self-interest, selfish things. So try a prayer journal. The other thing is something I call biblical journaling. Biblical journaling. You get into the Word, you let God speak to your heart, and then you write down your conversation with God. Here is my journal. I'm in Joel chapter 2, verse 30 right now. You pick a book of the Bible, read through it verse by verse, and God has something he wants to say to you. The Bible wasn't just written for the men and women of antiquity. It was written for those of us who live on the very verge of the second coming of Jesus. And God wants to be vulnerable, transparent, and open with us. Those same principles, insights, thoughts, ideas that God communicated to that audience of old, we can take those same principles and apply them today to April, May of 2020, to the times that we're living in, and it will just speak to our hearts. It'll reassure us that God's still there for us. We can hear a word from the Lord. Let me share a couple things that God has whispered to me of late. The other day I was reading through 2 Chronicles chapter 20. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. It's about Jehoshaphat. You remember that story where a great multitude attacks Judah, uh, the Edomites, the Moabites, the Ammonites, Mount Sir, just everybody out there came one mass conglomeration. And Jehoshaphat was scared. He didn't know what to do. I want to read that, 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Jehoshaphat's first reaction was, verse 3, and Jehoshaphat feared. He feared. It's a natural human reaction to fear. When the coronavirus hits us, we're afraid. When we don't know when this thing will lift. Will it lift in May? Will it lift sometime during the summer? Well, God forbid we, we have to do online classes next fall. I hope not. But just the uncertainty. There are several couples that I know of that are planning to get married. They were getting married the end of May. And they don't know when it's going to be now. All this uncertainty, it causes fear. But Jehoshaphat did something with that fear. He didn't harbor it. He didn't let it kill him and crush him. It says Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. God wants us to bring our fears to him. He wants us to come to him just as we are, with all of our hang-ups and our issues and our fears and our frustrations, and just, Lord, I'm having a hard time with this. And so, as I continue to read through this story, and I read it the other day, verse 12 jumped out at me. Jehoshaphat prayed, O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do the punchline, but our eyes are upon you. Our eyes are upon you, Lord. We're clueless. We're powerless. But we're looking to you. And God rewarded that submission, that humility, and through a prophet, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, and gave a word from the Lord. And this is what God said to Jehoshaphat and to the whole encampment of, of Judah and to us today, staff and students of Southern Adventist University. 
Do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Then skipping down to verse 17, you will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. I read somewhere that there are 365 commands in the Bible. Do not fear. Don't be afraid. Don't freak out because the Lord is with you. What do you know about 365? The number of days in the year. For every day of the year. God whispers to you and me, don't be afraid. I'm with you. And so in my journal, I pondered these things, God's message, don't be afraid. And this is what I wrote to the Lord. Lord, this is, encourages my heart. A great multitude of cares, perplexities, and challenges have been arrayed against me. Work stresses, parents' health issues, being consumed with caregiving, my own health issues. I had recently had an MRI and a, a CT scan. Uh, the biopsy came back great, by the way. I'm uptight about the outcome of this coronavirus. All of this devastation from the tornado but this morning, you remind me not to be afraid or dismayed, for you are with me, and your presence makes all the difference in the world. I don't need to fight these battles. You will fight them for me. I only need to quietly, calmly wait upon you and see your salvation and deliverance. Lord, this morning I wait, I rest, I trust, because you are here holding my hand and carrying me through. You are an amazing God. I want to promise you, I've been doing this for about 37 years, this morning journaling. Pick a book of the Bible, go verse by verse, ponder each verse until you discern the thought the promise, the idea, the principle that God has in that verse for you. And you can walk away assured that everything is going to be okay. Several other quick things I would recommend for all of us. Get outside and enjoy the sunshine. Take walks. I have my four-mile route that I like to do, and Judy and I, my wife, love to walk. We just came back from a walk a little bit ago where we were enjoying the beautiful spring weather. And somehow, as you look at those bright yellow buttercups, as you see the, the, uh, the robins <laughs> were dancing around in the yard, it reminded me, David, don't Take a thought about what you're going to eat or drink or what you're going to wear. This is in Matthew chapter 6. Because the lilies don't worry about what they're going to be clothed with. The birds don't worry about what they're going to eat because our Father in heaven takes care of them. And if God clothes the flowers and if he watches over the birds... He's got a good hold of us. So get outside. That sunshine will create that vitamin D, that serotonin, that uh, mood-enhancing natural chemical. And then I want to close with this thought. As I said, I woke up this morning kind of that funky mood. But I saw this little video clip. Channel 9 was doing... Uh, some news reporting on the aftermath of the tornado. 
and down off of Shallowford Road, there is this Wesleyan, I think it's Faith Community Wesleyan Church, was totally demolished on Easter night of all times. There was this pile of rubble, and there was this perfectly preserved piano, this grand piano sitting on top of the pile of rubbish. And this lady came walking by. She is actually a uh, band director for a middle school in, in the community. She plays the piano for a church down in Dalton. She is a wonderful Christian lady. Tracy Code, I believe her name is. She saw this piano and she said, you know, that piano has more music to give. That piano is not finished yet. So she climbed on top of the rubbish, something that the news reporter suggested, hey, don't do that. She sat down, somehow positioning the bench, and played this beautiful, gorgeous piece, that piano in perfect tune. And as I saw that, it spoke to me. God spoke to me. And said to me, and I want to pass this on to you, don't let the devil squeeze, choke, take, circumvent the music out of your soul. You have more music to give. Don't let this coronavirus, don't let these tornadoes, don't let the failure to be able to connect with the internet and all these things choke the music, the joy, the hope out of your heart. Keep a song in your heart. Keep your trust in the Lord. And he will positively, it's a guarantee, he will carry you through because he's promised. God bless you. Keep looking up. Keep your eyes on the Lord, just like Jehoshaphat. He's there for you. He's there for me. He's got this in the palm of his hand. Let's trust him. Let me pray with you. Lord, you're an amazing God. Thank you for your word that assures us you're still present in our life. We can hear your words, your promises, your assurances whispering to our hearts. Don't be afraid. I've got this under control. Lord, thank you for these other things. It's gutsy prayer and making out a, a prayer journal, other things we can do to connect with you and grow deeper with you. Lord, may this time of uncertainty drive us deeper to you and not drive us away from you. Thank you for keeping us in your care. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We can't wait to see you all back on campus. We miss you.